What is going on, guys? Kit Bash here. Coming at you with another video. This time, it's of a topic I get all the time. Um, You know, how do I do this? How do I do that? So, I'm going to help you guys, at least try to help you guys, walk you guys through making your first custom or making a custom period. Just custom action figures in general, from my point of view. Before we get started, though, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button right there. Hit the bell. Let you know when I upload. Upload every other day or every other two days, I should say. And every custom I do, I do a review on. Uh, I do a review on techniques I do and stuff like that. So just hit the bell. Stay informed. Let's get started. So in this one, I'm going to show you guys a couple different uh, versions, not versions of customs, but a couple different customs I'm working on and various uh, stages of customs just to walk you guys through my processes and show you guys how it's done. So here we go. The first thing I want to talk about is uh, prep time and paint consistency. So I'm going to show you guys a couple paints. I don't have the right stuff out here to show you guys how the thin the paint is, but we'll see. So let me start by telling you guys the paint that I use, paints that I use, which is Model Masters Acrylics. You can tell by the blue label if you find these. I use, I have a Tamiya somewhere, but I don't know where it is. I use uh, Model Color, which is Vallejo acrylic paint. Um, and that's about it. These are the two that I use. Two paints that I typically use, and this will be for smaller details, and this will be for repainting. I mean, I use them all for the same thing, except for this one. The reason I don't use a uh, model color more is because it it rubs off. To be honest, model masters as long as you prep the surface, it'll stick. It'll it, it'll do what it's supposed to do. So you want your paint to be the consistency of milk. Um, that's very important. It's important that you don't do thick layers. It's important you do thin layers. You get as much paint off the brush as you can. There's more paint on the brush than you think. So. Try to do thin layers with these paints because they will stack and they will uh glob like they will get like globs in the joints and it'll look it'll look crazy. I know people have seen customs where they paint a figure and you can see chunks in the paint. That's because they're using too much paint and too thick layers. So consistency of milk on the paint and thin layers. You might have to do two or three layers, but it's okay. As long as they're thin layers, you should be fine. So paints I don't use or I'm not familiar with really is like Citadel. I use Citadel because I, I have this one. Is it still good? I don't even know if it's still good. But this is the only Citadel paint I have. I hear a lot of great things about Citadel. I just don't want to buy a bunch of Citadel paints because I have a bunch of Model Masters paints. But these are kind of hard for me to get. I have to order them on Amazon, and they're usually not, they're not as cheap as they would be if I find them in person, of course, because they have to ship them. And um, I haven't dove, I haven't took a dive into this brand yet. I want to because I'm, I hear so many good things about it. So I might, we'll see what happens next year. Maybe next year I'll start buying more Citadel paints and different paints. And then Tamiya's too. I, I used to use Tamiya a lot when I first started customizing. Let me try to pull it out if I can find it. Is this it? Yep, this is one of them. So I used to use Tamiya a lot when I first started customizing. But this brand is better. I don't know. I hear a lot of different things about it, but to me, this brand is better than airbrushes. A lot of uh, Gunpla builders use this paint. Um, you can't, this paint is alcohol based, so you can't really water it down with water like I do. You have to, um, I haven't used this paint in years. I don't know, I want to tip it too far, but you can kind of see, you can't see anything. But um, I haven't used this paint in years. I bought it from hobby people, I want to say. And it was four dollars. I think this is like five dollar paint now. But it's alcohol based and it's not as uh forgiving as Model Masters. This is a little different for me. So I just I used it when I first started and everything I made was terrible. So I shied away from it. I got away from this paint really fast and I got different paints uh because is this focused? Now it's focused. Wow. Yeah, I got away from this paint really early and I want to get I want to get back into it. They make really nice metallics, Timia. So I want to get back Model Masters from my experience doesn't have I don't see any metallics when I look. So it's something I want to get back to just because it's good for metallics and stuff like that. So this is a paint I don't use. Citadel is one I don't. There's plenty of other other paints you can use out there. Um, I don't airbrush at the at the moment. So there's a lot of paints I don't even know about or I don't use, but. As long as you prep and clear, you can use any paint you want, really. 
Just prep your figures and clear them and you can use any, literally any paint you want. Another thing too, people ask me is how do I prep my figures? What do I use to prep my figures? And literally this is what I use. Um, I use sanding blocks. Uh, this is a file that's broken, but I use a file and I don't really prep my figures like most people. Like I was watching Symbiote Seeker. This is my, my sanding uh, sticks right here. I was watching Symbiote Seeker and he was talking about like how long it takes him to prep a figure and how long it usually takes him and stuff like that. And he said 12 hours. There's no way in hell I'm going to sit around and sand on a figure for 12 hours. I'm not doing none of that. Me personally, I try to kit bash. Uh, I try to kit bash parts and pieces that I don't have to prep. So if I'm making a figure and he, I want him to have black, I find black. I don't just use anything I have and paint it black because I don't want to paint rub. I don't like paint rub and I don't like prepping. I'm a different type of uh, customizer. There's a reason I named my page and my Instagram and my stuff kit bash customs is because that's how I customize. I kit bash. I kit bash that way. I don't have to paint like this figure. I'm going to keep going back to this one. There's some more figures I'm going to show you during this video too. But this figure, I knew he was going to be X-Force color. So it was, it was a no brainer for me to make everything black and i found all of these pieces black i didn't paint one thing but this i only painted one thing on this figure and that was the the leg only because it was ultron and it was like a different color uh it was a different color it was like a bronze bronze ish silver it was like a weird silver so yeah i don't paint i don't i don't like to prep and paint that much even this guy i had i had purple i had found purple uh legs for him and i painted them black and it just was a mess it was it was a tragedy in my head, so I re I redid his legs and his waist, and I just gave him black. That way, I don't have to worry about the paint rub, and I didn't have to clear it because I cleared these legs and the paint. The clear didn't stick, and it was just a it was a fucking mess. So, per it's a prime example. There's there's ways to do everything, and um, I prefer to kit bash. That way, I can do my own thing. I don't have to prep and paint and all of that jazz. So yeah, these this is pretty much what I use if I do prep my surfaces. Most times I don't, but sometimes you have to because the plastics are weird. These are just the sanding blocks I use. I got these from Walmart on clearance a few years ago. This one's 220 and 150 grit. I don't know which is which. I think this is 220 and that's 150. I don't know. I just know the yellow one is super fine and this one's a little bit harsh. And this is, these have two different sides. These are harsh and they just do the job. They do what I need to do. So this is what I use to prep. Oh, Dremel too. I use a Dremel. But that's only if I really need to prep a joint. This is a Dremel that I have. So I use a Dremel 4000. It has varying degrees of uh, speeds from 35 all the way to 5, I think. Yeah. 35 all the way to 5. And um, it's cool. It's heavy. It's big and it's heavy, so it's kind of hard. You got to really get used to swinging the weight around on this in order for you to do, uh, you know, sand and prep and do what you need to do. But it's really good. I really like this one. It came with a lot of attachments and... I find a lot of my attachments at Ross. I found a pack at Ross for like 10 bucks and it had a bunch of sanding discs. I mean, cutting discs and sanders and everything. So if I really want to prep a joint, like say I don't have this in black or there's a certain boot that I want, but it's not black. I will you bust out the Dremel and get the joint down and paint it and go that route. Another question I get a lot is what sculpt do I use? And I'll tell people I don't <laughs> because I don't sculpt. But I do have Avs Epoxy Sculpt. Is this open? No, it's not. I do have Avs Epoxy Sculpt. And you can see it's yellow. It's it's yellow in there because I don't use this. At, I use it, but not often. Like, I, sculpting is my is my nemesis. I really try not to sculpt. Because I feel like I can't get the same consistency as everybody else. Like, Pounds. When Pounds 978 does his customs, he like he's like a fucking wizard. Like, I don't know how he sculpts to the point where... It's just so thin and so perfect. I can't do it no matter how much I sand, no matter what I do. It's always too thick. It's always wrong. It's always weird. So I tend to stay away from this as much as possible. I bust it out if I have to, but I don't really like using it. I'm not a good sculptor. There's Milliput. There's green stuff. And a lot of people say you can mix them. And you can mix Milliput with this. And you can mix green stuff with Milliput and Milliput with this and green stuff with this. And just it can, I guess it gives you different consistencies and different stuff like that. I'm not an expert. I just know what people say. And, excuse me. I just know what people say. And for the most part, 
Most people use this or green stuff. I want to try green stuff because it's softer. It's uh, It dries like a rubbery consistency, and I really want to try it. Uh, this stuff dries like stone, and I just can't get this right. So this is the scope that I use, Abs Epoxy. I got it on eBay. I think I paid, this is what, a pound, I think? This is eight, 16 ounces. I don't know how much is on a pound. I think it's 16 ounces. Don't judge me. But I bought this on eBay. It was like 22 bucks shipped for both of these because you can get different sizes. They even have some that come in containers like this. Not like this, but small like this. They have like little tablet sizes. They like they sell two tablets like the size of this lid. And it'll be abs epoxy. They sell them all different ways. I know green stuff comes in a tube where you cut it and you mix it. Milliput too. So this is what I use if I do use it. Abs epoxy. This is the one I've seen everybody use. So I just got it too. Now I want to show you different stages of customs. Different stages of customs all the way from, you know, beginning, which is like this one. I threw this one together. It's kit bash right now. I'm waiting on some stuff to come in the mail. And then you have this one, which is pretty much done. I just need a head. Both of these need heads, but this one's further along because it's almost done. And then you have customs like this one, which is done. I'm just modifying. I think I'm painting the gun on him. So because the gun's like four different colors and I want it to be one. So the different stages of customs here. And I wanted to show you uh, the process like this because I wanted you guys to see like, you know, where it goes. So for me, my point of view, when I start a custom like this one, I'm not going to tell anybody what this is because I have people guessing what it is. But for this one, I knew I wanted him to have boots and the belt might might have gave it away on the belt there. But I knew I wanted him to have boots and a posable body. So that's what I start with. Um, I try to find it depends on what I'm doing. Like I know for this one, this is Aquaman. He didn't need the most posable body. And I saw a guy on Instagram do use his Hercules upper torso. So I had to. Um, and so I know for him, he didn't need the most posable pieces. I was fine with that. But with this character I'm making here, um, I wanted him to be a certain way and I wanted him to be super posable. I'm still going to, I'm still going to fix like going here and dremel this out and make his legs kick straight. And he's not even all the way together. Like you see, he falls apart. This is still a whip. This is definitely a whip. It's been a whip for like the last few weeks. But I try to find the pieces that I'm used, I want to use, and I go from there. So this is the process that I take. I, I really go in and I try to figure out what I want to use, and I try to figure out, you know, how I want it to look and how I want it to pose and stuff like that. You can see I got him holding a gun, and it's the most natural way I can get him to hold a gun. Most most of them, like the Bucky Cap moles, don't have this butterfly joint, so they hold guns kind of funny. But I really wanted this guy to be able to hold these joints good, so I'm glad that I got it uh, done. This one, it's not, I'm really going to take some risks with this one and do some weird articulation with this one because um, I'm going to have cloth goods on him. So his articulation is going to be really, really good. Well, I'm going to do some crazy stuff. Like I'm really going to do something crazy. So I, I'm excited for this one. So if you wanted to start a custom for yourself, just what I, my, my best advice I can give you is, you know, don't just slap together a figure and paint it up. Um, try to find the pieces that best work for you and best work for what you're going for. Try to try to use parts and pieces you know you won't have to prep and, and stuff like that. That's really what I do. I really wanted to make my page. Uh, I really wanted to make my custom experience one that where it wasn't too much of a hassle because a lot of customizers, when I started or when I started liking customs, they wouldn't tell you like what to use and how to do stuff and they wouldn't do anything. So it, it just it really frustrated me that these people were making these awesome customs and didn't want to share the tips and tricks because uh, just because you do it doesn't mean that I want to, because I don't want to pay you $230 for a custom. I'm not going to pay someone 300 up to $300 for a Marvel legend with scoped on it and paint. I'm not doing it. Like, so when I started customizing, it was really important for me to do things the easiest way possible. So for me, um, kit bashing was that way. And once I found it and once I really started like, you know, scoping out the pieces and, and, and doing things the way that I wanted to do it, everything just came together. And I really love the way I customize. So when it came time for me to share everything that I do and, and the way I do things, I'm just really excited to be able to t show you guys, like, you know, it's not hard to customize. And I know a lot of people ask questions because they're curious and they don't know what to do and stuff like that. But I always tell people, 
Um, if you really want to start doing something, just do it. Like, you just have to go for it. I have two tubs of fodder with broken figures and parts and pieces. And you see all of this over here. All of this is from figures. You just have, even if you break something, you just have to do it. You can't, you can't just ask questions and think that, you know, someone's going to walk you through it because that's one thing I don't like doing. I feel like I put enough information out there for everyone to understand how to do this. So I don't, I don't like walking people through things. Just do it. You just have to go for it. Even if you break it, there's always another one. There's never just one of these. So like, comment, subscribe. If you guys have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them, but I will not walk you through this. I will not, um, you know, hold your hand. You just have to do it. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think and I'm out.